Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. If anyone thinks Pope Benedict is out of touch with the world, it's that person who's out of touch. This Pope knows oh too well the condition of the world. Consider that last December he publicly drew a comparison between the fall of the Roman Empire and the collapse of Western civilization. During Holy Week he openly and repeatedly preached in his homilies about the crisis of faith in the West and how active Satan is in the world right now. He has hit on this theme over and over again. Even before being elected Pope, he said that the church may have to grow smaller and exist in small communities that nevertheless fight an intense battle against evil. Just this past week here in Rome, he struck this same note again when speaking to the Pontifical Academy of Social Sciences. He said religious freedom is under attack from forces he compared to the totalitarian powers of Nazism and communism in the 20th century. He called these contemporary forces, quote, attitudes and ideologies which would impede free religious expression, end quote. He called on the faithful to begin to fight back. Civilizations collapse because they rot from the inside out. A major think tank recently published a study where it examined the reasons for the demise of world empires, and it found three common elements. First, the cultural order disintegrated. Contraception became widespread, which led to abortion becoming widespread, which in turn led to homosexuality becoming widely accepted. Number two, next, the economic order collapsed, owing chiefly to unsustainable debt. As fantastic author Brian Gale states in his upcoming book, once self-mastery was lost in a society's bedrooms, it was forever lost in its legislative bodies. And lastly, the third collapse sign is political order implodes when an empire's or a civilization's currency lost its value, when prices start going through the roof on items that families have structured their lives around, the government loses its people's trust. Black markets, rebellion, repression, and anarchy follow. Empires and civilizations collapse because morals collapse. This is the point our Holy Father is making because this is what he sees happening everywhere in the West. And of course, this is true. Aside from the theological implication of one's eternal life, Morality also involves how we relate to one another in the present moment. If one's life is governed by a philosophy of self-centeredness and ego, which is what all immorality is at the bottom line, then the way members of civilization relate to each other will also end in destruction. After all, what is a divorce, for example, other than the collapse of a tiny civilization? What is single parenthood other than a testimony to the times in which we live, which we all bear responsibility for in one form or another? To think that this collapse has not touched the church would be naive in the supreme. We can look around everywhere inside Holy Mother Church and see implosion that has happened because of the attitude of me first on the part of so many. Bishops who will not stand up to the onslaught of evil, evil cascading over their faithful. Clergy too afraid to preach what needs to be preached for fear of their bishop or their congregation turning on them. Chancery officials, clergy and lay who add to the destruction by their willful neglect and oftentimes malice. Religious orders of both men and women who have abandoned their roots in favor of the latest psychotheobabble fad promoted by some former cleric or religious with an ax to grind. The difference between the city of man and the city of God, as St. Augustine referred to them, is that the city of God will survive because it is divinely protected. The city of man will collapse when it turns its back on the things of God. This is what the Pope is clearly seeing. The city of man, Western civilization, is turning its back on God, and it is going the way it should go in consequence. But the church will be purified, as it has many times in the past, and it will emerge stronger, which means holier than before. It will be the church's job to confront the tyranny of the newest city of man, the emerging civilization, whose attitudes and ideologies are opposed to the truth of Christ. It seems as though the church is being prepared for battle. The vine is being pruned by the master so that it may again yield greater fruit. It is to everyone who realizes this truth that the Pope is calling to across Europe and North America and Australia, in short, the West. Like Noah gathered his family into the ark before the flood, the Pope is warning of the coming days and gathering his children into the ark of the church. In probably a time shorter than we realize, the West will resemble the remains of the Roman Empire, but the Holy Church will remain. 
Listen closely to what the Pope is saying. God love you. I'm Michael Boris. Please help us keep delivering these kinds of messages that so desperately need to be heard and acted on. Join RealCatholicTV.com today as a premium subscriber. Become immersed in the faith established by Jesus Christ. The Catholic Church is the only hope against evil because that is its God-given mission. As our Lord said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Join RealCatholicTV.com today as a premium subscriber and come to learn and love Christ more deeply.